question 19 is recommended to be done after question 18 because the two are closely related. In question 19, the emitter's frequency can be tuned. The probe is brought to a point 1.73 meter and metal plate PQ is then removed, meaning the barrier is no longer there. What should be the frequency of the emitted waves be so that microwave signals of maximum intensity can be picked up? In order to solve this problem, we must know how the microwaves reach the probe. A clear difference from question 18 is the absence of the metal plate, so the microwave can directly propagate towards the probe. Another alternative path is just like the previous question, whereby the microwave propagating towards the wall XY is reflected towards the direction of the probe. One thing to note that the sweet spot to achieve this reflection is different from previous question because the probe now is located nearer to the wall, and since it is now vertically below the emitter, an isosceles triangle should be formed and hence by Pythagoras theorem we can easily show that both the incident and reflected paths have a length of 2.05 meter. Next, in order to get maximum intensity, the two different wave paths must interfere with each other constructively. One can see from the schematic diagrams below that to allow constructive interference, the two paths must have a total phase difference of n lambda, where n is an integer. Now, what we need to know is what contributes to the phase difference. In this case, it is due to the reflection and also the difference in path length. Path difference can simply be obtained by subtraction, while for reflection will cause the wave to experience a phase change of pi or we can further translate it to lambda over 2 because by definition one cycle of the wavelength corresponds to 2 pi. Hence, this allows us to write down the following equation, n lambda equals to lambda over 2 plus 2.05 plus 2.05 minus 2.2. With this we can show that 1.9 is equal to an odd integral multiple of half lambda. Or we can also express lambda as k times 3.8, where k is an integer. Finally, we can calculate the frequency by knowing the velocity is the product of frequency and wavelength. Starting with k equals to 1, this will give us 79 megahertz. Observing that there is no other option smaller than 79 megahertz, there is no need for us to check cases where k equals to 2, 3, 4 and so on. Hence, the answer is e.